What's up friends? Today we're going to talk about the benefits of doing things alone and why I think everyone should spend more time alone purposefully. So as some of you may know, last year I left Harvard. I took a leave of absence after my sophomore year and can realistically go back whenever. But part of what I've learned over the last year or so since being away from school, part of the journey that I've been on has been discovering my own needs. I think you leave a place like college where a lot of things are done for you. It's a little bit more hands-off than like high school when you're living at home, but you're still being handheld a little bit. You're put in places among thousands of peers your own age. Sometimes there are meal plans, you don't have to grocery shop buy your own food, etc., etc. One of those things I felt like I was missing since leaving school was a peer group a group of people my own age that I felt some sort of belonging to. And I guess that solution is multifaceted. Part of it is like, I did find that group of people. I found my tribe in this place called Versi, which is basically a social club slash co-working space. Um, I've met a lot of my closest friends in New York City there. The other half of it was me having to learn that it's okay to spend time alone to meet some of my other needs. Now that's not like social needs, it's more like personal needs. Now I know me explaining to you to spend more time alone, that probably doesn't sound very intriguing. I think loneliness often gets a bad rep. And when you think of somebody being lonely, you think of them being sad and depressed. Um, but I think there's a world where you can be alone, but not lonely. And I've talked about this a little bit in some of my other videos. I do firmly believe that spending some time alone by yourself is good for you. I know people who are highly dependent on always being around other people, but I think being alone is a good skill to have in case times of loneliness come up. Spending time alone has a multitude of benefits. I think it allows you to find yourself, find who you are at your deepest core. You're able to be introspective, figure out like your needs, your wants. Think about who you like want to be in this world, what you like to do. Personally, spending time alone has allowed me to think about my thoughts. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but when you're around people so often, you just don't get the opportunity to abstract away how, both how you think and, and how you feel. I do think it's made me a little quieter, but that doesn't mean I'm bored and have less going on. I think I'm just oftentimes more aware of what I'm doing, how I'm feeling, and how I'm reacting to things and portraying myself, things like that. Another benefit would be that I think I have better focus um, and also a better ability to recharge. Um, a lot of us, like our attention spans, our dopamine centers, whatever, have been so screwed up um, by platforms, especially like TikTok, which I am a victim to. Uh, but I also think spending so much time with other people, you don't get the opportunity to really deep focus. Growing up, I had to teach myself to focus in busy environments, um, but that's gotten harder and harder for me as I've gotten older. But I do think being alone fixes that. Also, in terms of recharging, being by myself allows me to fully immerse myself in activities that take my mind off of things. Times I need to rest, I actually am able to because there is nobody around to distract me. Moving on, I feel like I spend more time with people that make me feel good um, and less time with people that don't. Um, I find myself spending more time with very few people who I feel I know and are part of my tribe, so to say, um, and less people I would normally only hang out with socially and don't really know that deeply. I think spending time by yourself in solitude also enables you to be more creative. When you think of great artists or philosophers or thinkers, or even a guy like Batman or Tony Stark, these fictional characters. They spend a lot of time alone by themselves where they're able to think, create, and articulate clearly. You just aren't as worried what other people may think when you're by yourself. 
in your own space. For me, my best content creation came when I was living with my friend in our like shared basement in high school. Um, that's really like when my TikTok career took off. Down in that little dungeon, I just had no worries in the world of what anyone thought of me when I put a video out into the world. Not a lot of people even knew what the app was at the time, so I wasn't even worried about people from school seeing. But that place to me was like where I could flow and create without the worry of other people judging me. Sometimes when it comes to social media especially, I feel I have, I'm not as worried about judgment because social media as a whole feels like this fake little world where we're all hiding behind screens. So I think that's why social media content is a place where I feel safe and, and comfortable creating. And I do think once you get over the feeling of other people judging you, of other people critiquing your work, that's where your best work comes from because it allows true you to shine through. Now I want to move into the idea of perspective in two senses. One, being alone, spending time by yourself, you have to change your perspective on the idea of loneliness as a whole. You can't go into something like this telling yourself, oh, I'll be miserable, I'll be lonely, I'll be sad. You have to shine it in a positive light so you can take full advantage of the experience. You have to go into doing things by yourself um, in an optimistic mood with the goal of getting something out of it. This will actually be detrimental to you if you go in with a negative view of things and, and how it will turn out and affect you. The second aspect of perspective, I think it gives you a new perspective on life. The times I've gone out to eat by myself, I've gone to a movie. You're no longer worried about like being with somebody and interacting with them and, and keeping a conversation flowing, whatever. Uh, you almost get to be this fly on the wall watching other people and how they interact in the world. And it's, it's kind of fun, to be honest. I think it gives you the space and opportunity to shape your own views of the world that aren't based on other people's. Um, this gets back into the core idea of finding who you are at your core. Another benefit would be that you get to move at your own pace. So yesterday I went to the MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. All by myself, just bought a ticket and, and walked in, walked around. I loved that experience so much more because I could go walk around, wander the museum, like I said, at my own pace. I've been to museums in the past with other people and we just have like different ideas of, of what we want to get out of exhibits and out of the space as a whole. Sometimes you want to like see different parts. I remember going to the Natural History Museum in high school. I wanted to see the dinosaurs. One of my friends wanted to see like the planetarium. Um, so I know we had to go to both, but times where you're by yourself and able to do your own thing, go at your own pace, I feel like you get a better experience as a whole. I also struggled with like taking initiative and, and making my own plans because I was always so dependent on other people making plans and me just following along with them. I think over the last year, I've learned how to create my own plans, create my own agenda, figure out what I want to get out of experiences when I go to new places, what I specifically want to do and through that I feel like I've become a little bit more of a, a complete person I look back and I'm disappointed that I couldn't like think for myself when it came to certain situations or, or really know what my own needs were but I'm very grateful that now I'm more aware of things that are on my bucket list things I want to do and just yeah, taking initiative and, and going out and doing them. The last benefit I should say that I had for this video, I'll get into now and then I'll move over and talk about like some of the daily things I do go and, and do by myself. So this last one would be that you build confidence. You build confidence in yourself. When I go and spend a day just dedicated to doing things that I want, at the end of the day, I come home and I'm just proud of myself 
for stepping out, taking initiative, and doing all those things without being dependent on somebody else to do those things with. Sometimes we don't treat ourselves with enough respect or enough kindness. I think in a situation like this, you have to realize that you are your own best friend and should want what's best for you. Some of us sometimes just get too caught up in pleasing other people. I would call myself a little bit now, but more in the past, like a yes man. I would just say yes to everything because I never wanted to disappoint people. But nowadays I have more confidence in myself. I have more confidence in me saying no to plans and I have more confidence in who I am. I struggled over the last few years with a little bit of social anxiety, but I've, I've moved towards more of a point where I feel more comfortable in my own skin and happy with who I am. I have better self-esteem. I think, especially with spending time influencing being an influencer, I think you become very dependent on what other people think of you. And a lot of your confidence comes from people saying positive things about you online. And yeah, I think that's always great, whether you're an influencer or not, getting positive comments on social media. But I just feel like I'm not as dependent on that anymore. Now, lastly, we'll get into some of the things that I have experimented with and done alone. Um, so number one would be eating out alone. Sometimes when my Instagram stories, I'll just photograph myself at a table alone and there is like some sort of power in doing something like that like you look around sometimes you're a little bit embarrassed because you know other people are looking at you being alone but on the inside i feel powerful knowing that i can do something like that those people are probably judging me because they can't I've gone to movies by myself. I used to live in Hell's Kitchen in New York and was close to one of the movie theaters in Times Square. Um, so I used to go to the Regal Cinema there. And when John Wick 4 came out, I, I just went to the theater by myself alone in the middle of the night. And I had a wonderful time because I, I wasn't worried about getting there on time, getting snacks, getting seats. All the planning and making sure whoever was with me was like comfortable and would have a good time. I just did everything for myself. Next would be museum. Yesterday was actually, I think, the first time that I've been in like a large museum by myself. Yeah, I had a great time just wandering around, looking at whatever I wanted to look at. I never feel the need to like read everything on the walls and take pictures of everything in the exhibits. I feel like I got everything I wanted out of that experience. Another big one, especially living in a city like New York, would be going on walks, like little adventures. Sometimes I'll just leave my apartment not knowing what the day holds. Yesterday, I put a whole picnic blanket in my backpack expecting to just go lay out in Central Park by myself, but ended up doing a million other things that weren't in the plans. If I had gone and done that with something else, that totally would not have been okay. Uh, but since I was the only one there making the plans for myself, I felt completely fine changing up my plans based on what I actually wanted to do. I didn't get roped into doing something that I wouldn't have actually enjoyed. So those would be the big four things now. Um, there are other things I've been writing down and, and want to do, especially while I am in, in such a wonderful city like this. But that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I've just been learning so much about my myself in the world leaving college that I just like to share these things with you guys even if no one's watching these things these videos um, but I'm just yeah I just love making content this is how I like to create this is how I've always wanted to create its video I hope you found some of what I had to say useful thank you guys for watching if you have anything at all to say comment down below and I'll catch you guys in the next video peace